Thank you for coming. Hi, James. Thank you very much, Rob. I'm mute. I was muted. Sorry. There you are. Have you got the same thing where on Teams you can't see yourself? Um. Yes, but I have two screens, so. I have, okay. Um. So it's just some peculiarity of Teams today, isn't there? Because I was in another meeting and uh, we realised we couldn't actually see ourselves. But yeah. Anyway. I presume you can see me, not that that's probably a good thing. No, it's a great thing. <laughs> I thought I'd give a few minutes for people to join. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've, we've had two people so far, and have we should. I'm not sure. Sorry. <laughs> have had some um so we're recording just in case and also we're transcribing so um if any of the students want to say anything or things want to say anything transcribe uh not that ms teams has the ability to transcribe but that's just my doesn't like it I don't know whether it's just me, but there's little bits where you're uh, you, you you sort of break out, you know, you break up a bit. Do I? Is that Alicia? Can you hear everything? And, and Ashish and Fatima, is it? Can you hear OK? I, I agree, James. Yeah, it's breaking yeah. out a little bit. Yeah. Can, can you hear me now? I think that's yes, that's yeah. that's really clear. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I moved my microphone out of the way and I forgot that it wasn't. No, you, you did an Elena. Apologies. Yes, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> right. OK, I think we have five minutes into this session. I think we can um, start now. Um, OK, so hello, everybody. Um, this is the open day for the MSC in computational architecture. It's a fairly new program. We are pretty excited about it. Uh, my name is Murat Barquet and we are joined by James Birch, who is Associate Head of Architecture, waving in the background back Hi. there. <laughs> um, and um, I'm excited to present this. So just before we get started, for um, anyone that needs a transcription, 
at the top and you haven't used Teams at the top, you'll find three dots um, that you can click on and it'll give you a, a drop down menu that will then open a sidebar that shows a transcription, a live transcription of um, what we're saying. Um, apologies for the technology, <laughs> but um, hopefully you'll do the best. Um, also, please keep your mics muted while I'm talking and then please feel free to either raise your hand or just open your mic and ask questions during the Q&A session at the end of the session. <laughs> Excuse me. And so just a quick note about UWE. Um, we are a pretty cool school, uh, 36 in the UK, 20, top 20 for graduate employability and the fourth in the Southwest here in England. So our uh, new program um, has is kind of looking a little bit backward for a minute. Um, we are trying to look at the issue of computational design in general. So computational design started back way when at the end of the 1990s um, and around that century, people started to know a little bit more about physics. And so we could quantify a lot of our design um, thoughts and the things that we wanted to do. Um, it quickly became uh, adopted by research and practice to solve complex issues of structure, environmental issues, um, acoustical issues. Um, education hasn't caught up with that very much. So what we are trying to do is solve that issue. Um, our program is um, kind of pretty unique in that sense. Um, on this side of the uh, century, biology has started to become more quantifiable and we could actually learn from biological systems um, that has helped us to, as a, as a research and as a practice, to try to solve um, very complex and um, multi-scalar issues. And so we are pretty ambitious. Um, our staff and hopefully our students will um, have different backgrounds, both professionally, design, and um, personally. We, in our department, we are pretty collaborative and we're hoping that this program also will add to our innovation um, in the, the field. So just a quick understanding uh, the difference between computerization, computation, and creativity. We don't do computerization, even though we like to use it. But computerization is essentially doing what we do by hand, but with a computer. Computation, on the other hand, computes complex things that we cannot do by hand. And so we can use these methods to figure out our structure, to figure out environmental factors, to figure out um, different aspects of design that can be done uh, easily and more productively in a, uh, with a computer. What we do is the creativity part. Um, how to bring in what we know as designers and as engineers and bring in these creative new ideas from biology and physics and turn that into something that could actually um, change even small parts of the world. And um, I put this image just to give an example. If anyone has watched Interstellar, you'll see that the artists that were trying to visualize um, the black hole, um, actually their, their simulation and their computational methods helped physicists turn out two papers and changed how we know specific things about black holes. So even though if you're a designer, you can actually um, do something um, that is beyond what you plan to do in the first place. So a little bit about our structure. We have two sort of tracks. The top track, you'll see they are um, sort of aggregative. Um, and that track helps build up your skills. Um, and the track at the bottom is building up your research capabilities. So um, the first 
because we have two intakes. We have an intake in the fall or in the autumn um, and an intake in the spring. We have two boot camps, which are essentially uh, fast paced, uh, pretty intense um, um, ways of uh, bringing up your computational skills and thinking. They are introductions to different types of computational methods, but they also have lectures um, that are Socratic, so you understand why you're using these skills um, in this in this sort of context. And then following that, each one of them has a sort of application studio based stud um, module. Um, where you then have some time to digest what happened in the boot camp and apply that to a specific brief. Um, you'll see that the first set one uh, is called urban sentience. And so competing complexity and urban sentience provide methods and application at an urban scale. Um, that urban scale does not necessarily need to be architectural. It could be environmental. It could be social. And then the second one is about crafting systems, meaning looking more at uh, building uh, skin or a uh, specific sort of application um, at an engineering scale with fabrication methods um, and testing different sort of material and responsive systems. Once you've hopefully built up your skills by then, you'll get to the digital charrette and the make and build who two modules that are sort of feeding into each other. The, the digital charrette is more your time to be a little more creative, bring in everything that you've learned um, and design towards a live project that will then be built by everybody um, in, the make, uh, in the make and build module at the end of the year. At the bottom, you'll see design research, which is something that we share with the MArch program or the Masters of Architecture program, where you have time to have an open-ended investigation that kind of gives you some time to play around with material testing or whatever you planned to do um, in your dissertation. And that helps give you some time to uh, test a little longer. Um, and then you get, come into dissertation. Hopefully by then you already have a artifact and you have already known what the methods are, then you can produce a publishable piece of work uh, over the third term. So this is the full-time uh, structure. And you'll see we have a few things about our ethos. One is a computational fabrication, which is you know, a big part of, comp of computational design. You'll see that in the competing complexity and logic to artifact, we ramp up your skills. And then they will plateau a little bit during the design, but hopefully that means you've kind of digested that massive um, stressful moment. And then you then uh, apply that and hopefully take off and learn how to learn and investigate on your own after that. We also, um, what is very special about our program is that we also uh, have a thread of theory and critical thinking. Um, so, yes, you will learn the technical parts, but you also learn why um, we're doing this. How does this affect the world and how can we be innovative and find uh, new solutions for real life problems? Um, and then computational design um, and most new programs and new fields um, cannot be done alone. So then you will uh, progressively learn how to use collaborative design methods, how to work with uh, teams, um, be agile in your work, and be also um, creative in your generative discussions. Right. So then if you choose to use the part-time path, for the first year, you will use the you will do the skills, build up your skills all the way up to the top, and then you'll have a little bit of a break over the summer, and then you will start doing designer research and build up to your dissertation. While you're doing that, you may find yourself uh, working with people that have already started with us this year, 
um, which helps with some accumulative learning and hopefully some um, understanding of collaborative research and design. Um, we also um, uh, just to talk a little bit more about the actual little groups. So for competing complexity and urban sentience, this is an example by one of our students who was looking at uh, slums um, or unplanned settlements in Caracas and trying to find specific solutions based on biological um, models for that um, for that problem and also in a way that responds to that place without being having an intervention a western intervention beyond something that is not um that is more foreign to the place when we look at the logic to artifact and crafting systems it is more based you will learn the fundamentals again but in a different format um, but it will be working towards fabrication. How do you use laser cutters, 3D printers, CNC machines um, to build at a one-to-one -one scale? And then the digital charrette and the make and build will be a little bit more of a competitive competition, uh, where the design, um, the designs that come out from the digital charrette, based on their feasibility and their ability and our ability to build it, we will then in make and build all as a group all as a team and I say we because the staff is part of the team um, will build a live project with that. Um, now in design research then you can see this is an example of one of the projects that uh, was produced a couple years ago from design research and this was an investigation uh, purely by making and then testing uh, based on elephant skin to try to see how to um, create skins and uh, for buildings that uh, respond differently to different humidities and to different uh, variables of um, collecting water and um, the, as such. And then in the design research, you can then take that sorry, in the dissertations, you can take that information and all that open-ended investigation and really methodically learn how to write a piece of work that can be published. What is the, the literature review out there? Who has done things like this and why your project is more, um, is different and how does that change um, just a little bit of what we know about, you know, design. There is a uh, path two, if you've seen the website. Path two is uh, a little bit different for those of you who have, who may have um, done some work uh, either, in, either in your degree or have presented uh, some papers in conferences about computational design. Um, the option is instead of taking logic to artifact, uh, depending on where your path is and this is this would be discussed with myself and with James um, you can you have the option to take uh, some of our modules from the MSc in building information management and then instead of doing the design research since you've already produced something that has some design research you then would work with a tutor and build that up to produce a paper uh, a publishable journal paper out of that um, and that also helps you ramp up towards your dissertation um, this is our team our team is very diverse as you can see not just in the personal part but also we have tutors that um, are work with phenomenology work with anthropology um, that are artists, that people that, um, you know, obviously work with computational methods of different types of virtual reality. Um, and they come together, all of them, and bring in not just their passion, but also their research. So all of the modules that I was talking about, the briefs that are submitted are uh, part of their research, part of what they care about. And that's why I said we are part of the team uh, because you will be working closely um, with these fantastic people on something that they have spent years looking at. Um, 
So the outcomes are pretty straight uh, forward based on what I just said, but it's good to, to kind of explain that. Um, the theory and the history of computational design. Why do we use it? What does it matter? Um, you will learn simulation and generative methods based on social logic, biological and mathematical models. Um, you will learn fabrication, physical. Um, you, we have uh, people that work with automated construction and assembly. We also have, uh, we're building right now our technical capabilities um, to go um, beyond <laughs> what um, what most people think what fabrication or digital fabrication can be. The critical thinking and thin synthesis, sorry, synthesis um, is your response. So you learn the theory, you've learned the simulation and the fabrication. The critical thinking and the synthesis is how does this come together? Why does it come together? Um, you'll understand how to apply these methods um, with a critical dimension. Um, what does it mean to do this in design? Um, and then also, it, because it's a research program, you really need to uh, know how to take, an take on an investigation, have an open-ended time, and how to critically and explain um, what, your, what the problem is and how you're solving it and how does that actually um, affect the design process. Um, by the time you graduate, you will, your dissertation will be the thing that you get hired for, the specialty that you get hired for. Um, so um, through self-directed learning, this will become your calling card. Um, and because it's an innovation and because we're bringing in all this research into the teaching, um, and also you bring in your own hopes and dreams and things that you care about, this will then become your calling card. Collaboration is important. When you go out into the world, computational designers cannot work on their own. Um, and right now, in every field, computational uh, methods are bridging between different uh, domains. And so it is very important to have that uh, agility to work with different people. And communication, because it's a very complex place and a complex domain, you need to understand how to speak to other people and explain to them very complex data and complex algorithms and the experimentation methods behind it and also to publish so people can know what you're doing out there. So we we look at complex and interconnected problems. They may be uh, only environmental, they may be only social, they may only be economic, they might be a combination of some of them. Um, and we use open-ended investigations. So we have um, people that work with biomaterials, people that work with um, vernacular materials, um, and people that work with new methods of construction. So a few questions that I usually get. Do I need to know coding beforehand? Absolutely not. We assume that every student that comes to us is a novice. Um, and we take you from zero to hero very quickly through our boot camps. Um, do you have an architectural training? Not really. Um, we welcome a lot of different uh, parts. As I said, computational design is bridging architecture into different um, sort of modalities of thinking. And so we welcome a lot of different um, designers and engineers. Can I investigate my own interest is actually expected. And hopefully this is what you will uh, be bringing to the team. Um, for the entry requirements, you need a 2-2 or above an honors degree from architecture, product design, media design, digital media, engineering, computation, uh, computer science, pervasive media, an artist, or um, other type of design uh, remit. Um, you just, you, we don't need a portfolio as what we know, a sample of work um, to tell us who you are and what you're interested in. And obviously for international students, uh, we need an IELTS um, score of 
uh, and 55, uh, 5.5 for each component or something equivalent. Um, now, um, these are a little bit, if you, if you, um, I'll leave it here for a minute. Um, these are uh, extra places to go for information. We have postgrad funding, we have scholarships and bursaries. Um, you can contact admissions by their email or this phone. Um, accommodations information, uh, postgrad study information. We have UE uh, Bristol students uh, sort of discounts for um, for our students that graduated already, and there's a scholarship, a vice chancellor scholarship. Also, you can um, check our website. You'll see that we have lectures by other people from all around the world talking about different aspects of computational design. Um, and these are our social network links. And that is my email at the bottom. So I think for now, that was a brief of the, of the program. And I welcome any questions or James, if you have anything to add that I have forgotten. <laughs> Mike off. <laughs> Sorry. No, you certainly haven't forgotten anything. That was that was that was a fantastic introduction. So great. Thank you. So any questions from our prospective students? Fiona, you're welcome to turn on your mic or you can type. Hi, I'm just gonna come come on screen full. And um, I just wonder, do you have like an example of of a part time, like what a part time structure would look like? Um, yes, actually, I, um, let me let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, so here we go. At some Sorry, point, I might have missed it because I missed the first ten minutes. I'm at work. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so. I'm gonna, I'm just finding it. There it is. There we go. Okay, so for the part time, you would take the technical modules, the so computing complexity, and each of those are four weeks mm -hmm. um, right after each other, starting from September, or depends on when you start, but right after, if you start from September, then you four weeks each ending in the summer. And then the year after that, you do the research through design research that takes the full academic year and dissertations in the summer. And so uh, just like in terms of like uh, commitment, like of hours per week and kind of how that's spread out, do you have a kind of rough? I mean, yes. I know you're not going to necessarily always kind of completely commit to it, but uh, just from my perspective, because I work, I have two contracted days and then I my rest of my work is freelance. So just trying to work out where I would sit uh, in that space. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, we have already a part time student and she works um, in. Um, she works in an architectural firm. That's so Annie, each, isn't it? Is what? That Annie? Yes, it is Annie. <laughs> I know Annie. <laughs> um, so she so um, we have two full days from usually from 10 to 5 um, every for these modules. So then four weeks, eight sessions each. Mm -hmm. And then for design research, it is uh, one day, I think three hours a week um, that builds up. And for dissertations, it is uh, depends on your communication with your uh, supervisor um, and it's it's a little more flexible. So the so most of the the stressful part <laughs> uh, or the part where Annie is a bit struggling, but she seems to be working it out very well, is this part where you need to commit two days um, because you get all this is where you get all the technical skills um, and work in teams and build uh, different artifacts. Um, the second year would be more um, You'd be pretty much doing the same amount of work, but not scheduled except for design research where there are sessions and then there's work between sessions. OK, fine. And in terms of the sorry, I'm just going to keep please feel free to throw me off if you want other questions. But um, <laughs> in terms of like the dissertation, like what in 
in terms of like document like how big is that just out of curiosity that that's a good question so we our dissertation um is a bit different than a normal dissertation because it's a dissertation by design um meaning that you would have 60 percent of the text required but also that comes with an artifact that artifact could be a prototype a physical prototype that's been manufactured or you know um built or it could be a digital simulation tool or it could be some sort of algorithm um i think it's how many how many words i think it's uh from, from memory it's seven did we say seven and a half thousand words isn't it it's a seven and a half thousand to eight thousand words and then the artifact as well yeah yeah, that's so nice that you have the artifact as part of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's my kind of dissertation. <laughs> yeah, that also is meant to, because now there's, PhD, if you plan to do a PhD, there are PhDs out there by design, which is essentially the same format. So it's 60% of the text mm. for a PhD with an artifact. Oh, wait, I never even realised that existed. Yeah, that's my PhD. <laughs> that's how I got yeah. it. <laughs> That sounds great. That's so much more my way of working. I mean, my my original, my course when I was at uni was a 3D materials practice, which was just a lot of making things in, in lots of different ways. And that was like a lot of our marks were really heavily focused on us being in workshops and we had a lot of grading around that. So our dissertations were, I think, only 6,000 words. So yeah. it sort of feels like it's a similar mm. built ballpark. It's kind of I think it's probably it's probably quite a difference if you if you're doing it as a two year route. There's probably quite a different mode of working in the two years. So so as as uh, Marat was saying, the um, the first year needs these sort of quite intense learning experiences mm. to to develop the skill set, and then design research. You know, it sounds like there's not much teaching, but actually, you know, that there's kind of setting up the agendas for design research um, and then tutorials, but it will become a much more the thing you did in your undergrad in a sense of a kind of quite a, a, an investigative process mm. uh, and the dissertation kind of gradually building out of that. So that's almost the second year feel. I imagine, you know, it might feel more like a, a, um, a long investigation with those things linked together and in terms of that so because obviously you're you're starting your design so essentially that second year would be building all the way through to um like this end point mm -hmm. like how much scope is there to like m uh, maneuver your ideas in that space like do, do you set your kind of theme quite early on or is there a bit of space to kind of m change your ideas or do you need to kind of keep it fairly linear I think the the good thing about using design research is that you you will be constantly encouraged to focus, but there is some room in that to um, have an open invest open investigation. Right. So um, on the one hand, it's good to get into the practice of trying to focus, but there is also some. Um, room to play for a bit um, because normally dissertations are the three months so you don't have time for for playing but since we've added also design research as a prerequisite to the dissertations you can then test things out in design research towards a report of sorts and an artifact and then you've got three months to really focus it down write it down and then if there's anything left to do to get to the point that you actually finally find out found out sometime around after Christmas or something, then you have time to get to there. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's just kind of quite helpful to know because I'm quite a I'm a person of many interests, so it, like it's quite useful to know where where that needs to kind of cut off a bit. Yeah. Also, if you're going to run through it as a part timer, you'll have um, the the first year to test out different things. At different scales um and uh if you're still wondering you know where to go and what you really like and you really want to see what's out there first then i would suggest holding off taking a decision until you start design research and by that time you'll know that oh you like 
material testing or you like fabrication methods of certain types or you like simulation and computing um, complex uh, stuff or you uh, like a combination of those mm. because you're testing it at different scales um, you then but hopefully by that time you'll find actually this is what I'm more interested in and this is what I want to do sure all right thank you so much for all your help absolutely thank you for your interest mm -hmm. anybody else out there would uh, want to put on their microphone and ask questions We have um, we have a few other people. There's a name that is actually um, seems to me uh, to be sort of familiar. I think Fatima. I think I I knew someone like that back in the day with that name. Um, two people actually. They were cousins. You're not that person, no? <laughs> um, if you if you have a question um, and you your mic is, oh, she said, no, I'm not. OK, well, let's continue anyway. Um, if you have any questions and you want to type it in, that's fine. Um, also, if this was an overload and you still don't have a lot of grasp of what your questions may be um this is my email at the bottom uh please feel free to email me with any questions um or an email admissions um or call them if you have admissions questions Just, just, just on on that list of links, uh, Murat, the is the best one um, local to the masters, the uh, the MSc in computational architecture dot design one. Yeah, that's that kind of is a good good connection into because there's there's um, <clears throat> some lectures coming up, aren't there, and sort of a lecture series uh, from last sort of May, June, which um, which is really interesting. And, and anyone who's <clears throat> maybe not quite sure about the different ways of thinking about this, that, that, that those lectures would be a really good yeah. thing to have a look at. And for some reason, the link is not <laughs> my what my there it is. Uh, There's a verification. That's why it's stopping. Um, so that's yeah. So this is our website and you'll see links to um, the different talks from last summer um, and also we have a YouTube channel where all these are populated and they were kind of cool. We had people from aerospace, uh, artists, uh, a, uh, a mad scientist that likes to work with uh, live materials um and uh and you have links to our team um and their specialties and who um we are um might help with you know knowing what what we do so you'll see for example uh fidel and yaya and nina um they are not computational, but I work with them um, closely where they bring in the theory, the, the, the critical thinking, the depth in the thought, um, even in my own projects. And, they, and even yesterday, Fidel gave a very interesting uh, phenomenology lecture to our um, current MSc students, and they are, um, they came out wondrous, <laughs> very happy. I was happy. Yep. 
Yes, and Alicia is uh, posting some um, information about admissions and a link to a chat if you're interesting, interested in talking to someone um, and a link to uh, our main UE page. Um, so yeah, and this is our, I'm just going to drop it in if you don't mind, Alicia. Uh, I'm going to drop in the link. Oops. No. Nope. Oh boy. And the chat right here. And you'll see that you can follow us on the different platforms to see um, what's coming up. Great. Any questions? Any uh, concerns? Anything I missed? <laughs> no. Very yeah. Very so, clear. I'm sorry, Tom, please. Oh. Um, so my my office has got a slightly noisier because um, someone whose work has just been on the screen has just come in. So Megan is in here. Oh. Megan Peets. She's helping me collaborative practice this afternoon. Oh, so. great. <laughs> Say hi. Megan? Marat says hi. Hello. Hi, Megan. <laughs> yeah. no, Great. I think this was a good one. Sure, you haven't got any final questions, Fatima, Namrata, and Ashish? Any, anything? That frightened someone away, me asking them. Yeah, <laughs> she ran away. Um, <laughs> Fiona also said she's got to run. Students are waiting, but thanks. Good. Great. Good. Um, if there's, if that, oh, wait, someone's typing. Yeah, I just wanted to make a little go on. I spoke to James at the open day a couple of weeks back and had cleared up most info. That's, well, apart from Ashish, I, I couldn't remember, which I was telling Murat, I couldn't remember the name of the fourth module. Yes, crafting systems. Crafting systems. Good. Oh, it's nice, nice to see you there as well, Ashish. That's brilliant. Great. So Ashish is done with his questions. Nimrata. Do you have a, a last thought question? OK, I guess if that is it, that is it for us too. Thank you for joining us um, and thank you for your interest. And hopefully we'll see all or some of you soon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Mara. Thanks, Thank James. Really Thanks good. for joining us. See Thanks, Alex. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You try and find the